oh, she's due in July, and by the time you get around to the third child, you don't know exactly when they're due. And I thought, oh, I thought it might have been early July. I was a bit worried. Um, because basically, if you had a child born on the 30th of June, you get nothing. But if you get a child born after that date, after 12 o'clock midnight uh, on the 1st of July, you get $3,000. Call me crazy, but that seems like at least worth waiting 24 hours to, although I must admit child number three's mother wasn't amused at my suggestion. Fortunately, our baby was due late July, but there were a whole lot of babies due around that time. And so what happened in Australia in the last week of June and the first week of July 2004? Well, here's the graph. If you look at this graph, it plots the, 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 the line in the middle that doesn't look like it's jumping around like an earthquake, is what normally happens, taking the last 30 years, Australia, births per day. The line that's a bit lighter is the, is the one that, uh, of what happened in 2004. And you notice it dipping down all the way to the 30th of June and then spiking dramatically up on the 1st of July and then staying up a little while before it settled back down. It was like an earthquake hit maternity hospitals in Australia. By the way, that date, the 1st of July 2004, had more babies born on it on any day in Australian history. Australia's big birthday. Now, I don't know what else was happening around that day, but something tells me that that's $3,000 was not lost on parents. That there were parents quite happy to delay their uh, baby's birth dates a little bit in order to uh, get $3,000. That was the appropriate margin. So can $3,000 generate more births? Yes. <laughs> but it's only because of this little marginal change that it was being manipulated. And how do they do this, by the way? This was all in planned birth timing. Caesareans, indu inducements, uh, the things that you can have a talk with your doctor about when exactly you're going to schedule the birth. Turns out, doctor suggested 3rd of June, you sort of say, hey, can you make it the next day or two days after? And that's exactly what happened. Lesson number four. <laughs> this is actually an easy one. People respond to incentives. Back to children again. An incentive problem in economics comes when you have someone called the principal who wants something done and you're, they're trying to convince an agent who has an interest in not doing that thing. Pretty much that sounds like parenting to me. <laughs> so let's take an example where this is quite salient. Parents would like their children to go to the toilet rather than have to change dirty nappies. Children, on the other hand, are kind of used to that and have less pressure, less incentive to just change of their own accord. So how do you convince them to do that? Okay, so now the way I think about it, being an economist, well, got to get them to do something, I'm going to need a price. I'm going to need to bribe them. Which also gave rise to this picture that I initially considered for the cover of parentonomics of what I'm talking about. Now, obviously, children aren't motivated by money. I guess the first thing we tried to, to motivate our children to go to the toilet on their own, sit on the potty, was to uh, be very enthusiastic about that activity. Uh, that got us nowhere, by the way. You need something real and tangible. And so with our first child, we hit upon, well, we'd already made a distinction between healthy and unhealthy foods, special foods. Uh, we would reward her with special treats. And we, had a, and we tried to make it very obvious. And we had a jelly bean uh, bowl jar set up in, in, in our kitchen. Uh, and basically, the deal was if you went uh, to the toilet, you'd get one or two jelly beans, depending on what you did. <laughs> now, of course, this is the beginning of toilet training. So actually, we had, to, uh, we had to actually demonstrate that effect. So that meant anybody in the house had to do one or two, as the case may be, pick a jelly bean after they've gone to the, gone to the toilet. I'd come out, and, and uh, our daughter would come to me and say, are you getting one or two? And then order me to. <laughs> to take it. I must admit, you're pretty sick of jelly beans by that, by, that, by that time. But nonetheless, that got her attention. But it didn't actually yield any results. So being a good economist, I thought, well, the price is too low. 
So we moved up, jelly beans are just too weak. We moved up from jelly beans to chocolate frogs. Well, that did the trick. That got her attention. And, but in a funny sort of way. What she realized was that, yes, she could go to the toilet, but actually, if she just sat there all day, something would happen. And so what she was doing was just sitting there for hours on end, waiting for something to come out so she could go and get a toilet fro <laughs> to chocolate frog. People respond to incentives, but the way you <laughs> put the incentives will dictate how they respond to them. And we went on from there. We had to, of course, then we had to limit things. We had to limit the amount of time she spent there. It was not a bad activity, but you know, you couldn't really spend all your day doing this. We limited the amount of time. And eventually she had generated control. And then she learned another trick. She learned the ability to go to the toilet, squeeze a little bit out, <laughs> grab a frog, go back, do a little bit more. I must admit, that's not a bad skill, because that generates <laughs> control. So we let it go for a while, but eventually we had to wean her off this, and that's the hard bit there. But people respond to incentives, children respond to incentives, but if you're not careful, you might not get what you pay for. Five. Lesson number five. Trade can make everyone better off. The idea of trade is that people who have something that somebody else wants will work out a way of doing a deal or an exchange. Uh, this is obviously an issue when it comes to children sharing their toys with each other. Uh, I might talk about that in a minute. But the way uh, in which the lesson is learned in economics is the hard bit to learn is where is that opportunity for trade? What are you selling and what are you buying? And this comes to the fore when you think about encouraging your children to eat healthy foods. And by healthy foods, I mean vegetables. Basically, I want my child to eat vegetables, healthy living, etc., things that they don't know uh, about that they should do now. The child, on the other hand, would like to eat something else, Notice, notably something sugary. This is a, a trade situation. <laughs> okay. The problem with it is often parents consider themselves as a seller of the health. You think to yourself of trying to, I'm selling, I'm trying to sell you on health. It would be good for you to eat these vegetables. It would make you healthier, better on. Completely lost on a toddler, that relationship. And the reason it's completely lost is you aren't selling health. You're actually selling the unhealthy foods. You're, if you've got chocolates or ice cream for dessert, that's what you're selling, and you want them to pay the price by eating their vegetables. And so you have to, as a parent, think of yourself as a seller of unhealthy foods. And what you want to do is you want to get the best price possible for what you have to sell. That is, the most vegetables as a ratio of ice cream that you have to dole out later on. So that's the, that's the, that's the trade that you're engaged with. And so this lesson is, when you're thinking about trade, you have to work out what you're selling and who the customer is. And so what you want to do in that environment is you want to make the dessert sound as exciting and as interesting as possible, as opposed to trying to get the vegetables to seem interesting and exciting, which is pretty much a lost cause. Okay? If you can get that dessert to sound very interesting, you can give them far less dessert for the vegetables that you get. Number six. Markets are 